Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another Monday this and that vlog. And for those of you who are new, this is a video where I talk about many different topics, not just the couple that I put in the thumbnail and in the title. Otherwise, the title would be way too long and I couldn't fit all the words into the thumbnail. So let's get busy on the topics of today. And that's starting with the blackberries. Now, I don't have any out here to show you because the ones I've picked so far are all in the freezer. So we did last week, the blackberries really started coming in out at our other piece of property and we're getting the few here as well. And so Patrick and I went out and picked some because if you get out there and start picking those blackberries or any berries, for instance, as soon as they start getting ripe, the blackberries that come in later will be healthier and bigger. And so you got, if you keep up on it, you'll get a better harvest of blackberries. And so I'm hoping to have time to go out there today to get some more fresh because what I plan on doing, I want to have a, end up picking a total of 10 gallons, which I see no problem because there's lots of blackberries out there at other piece of property because we let them grow back in in some areas out there that had the property owner before us had kept mowed down. Now we're letting that fill in with blackberries. So, and they're why they're the Himalayan blackberries out here. They're considered a noxious weed because they will pretty much take over everything. But you know, if you maintain them, it's it's not that big a deal. And they're the some of the best tasting blackberries. So every at least every weekend we'll be getting out there to pick until i get at least 10 gallons put up in the freezer but i also want to get some fresh today because we're going to our friend's house for dinner tomorrow night and i promised i'm going to make a blackberry crisp and then patrick has been begging me to make some blackberry turnovers now <laughs> and so i plan on doing that and i don't want to pull the blackberries out of the freezer that i have so far so i'm hoping today i have time to do that because i got to get the turnover dough made today so it can chill all night in the refrigerator anyway i have an old video now this is old and it's way too long this is when i was still new to youtube and i got onto some tangent talking about health right in the middle of it of making these <laughs> turnovers and back then i didn't think well gee i should cut this out and then do a separate video just on that topic but um i might do an updated turnover video on how to make them uh when i go to do this we'll see uh, no promises but for now you can go ahead and go back to that old video that i'll link to in the description box down below and you can always just skip through my tangents where i'm blah 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 but uh anyway so i apologize for that in advance if you go to that video it's 45 minutes long blah 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 my goodness sakes so anyway um yeah, so that's what I plan on doing. I like to have, I, I haven't, we haven't been out picking blackberries in a long time. And so the last time we did, we had 15 gallons and I think I still have a little bit left in there. So I'm thinking 10 gallons, maybe if I can get more, I'm going to get more, especially since our strawberries and blueberries really didn't put out that much this year. And we still don't have raspberries again yet. So we, we're going to next year be putting in some more raspberries. And so I want to make up the difference. Oh, and our apple trees did not produce. So I'm wanting to make up the difference. This is how I do it. I make up the difference by packing the freezer full of blackberries because those we can get for free. So um, anyway, yeah, blackberries are one of our favorite berries. Raspberries first, then blackberries second. And so blackberry jam, blackberry pies, blackberry crisps, blackberry syrup for serving over ice cream. And then the blackberry turnovers, the blackberry smoothies, blackberry creamsicles, all the wonderful things you can do with blackberries. I love, love, love blackberries. So let's talk a bit about the zucchini. Um, this isn't going to look real pretty. <laughs> this is pineapple zucchini, and you're probably wondering why it's this color. Now let me show you a picture from last year when I did my first batch of pineapple zucchini. And you'll see a distinct difference in the color. And the reason for that is... Last year when I did it, I used only a little bit of coconut sugar and then cane sugar, and I peeled the zucchini, so I took all the skins off. This time, because I was experimenting, I only did five jars. I've already went worked through one jar because I had to try it. I left the skins on, which then added a greenish hue <laughs> to, the, to the zucchini, and I don't worry about the seeds, as you can see. And I increased the ratio of coconut sugar, so that's all, that's what added to the brownish color. So you've got this greenish, greenish brown color that isn't super pretty, but it still tastes wonderful, and I actually like it better with the skins. Whenever possible, I try to leave the peels on the zucchini because 
there's a lot of nutrients there and there's a lot of waste if you just throw it out. Of course, you can use the peels for something else as well. As long as you're just making it for yourself and you don't mind the color, you know, leave those skins on and increase that coconut sugar ratio to organic cane sugar ratio because you're going to get a lot more minerals in there and so it's going to be healthier and it makes it less sweet and i like this better i think than last year's batch even though it doesn't look as pretty so if you're interested in making the pineapple zucchini and i still might try the passion fruit juice as well i might do a batch like that with my zucchini so so i can at least try it but uh, anyway, I'll link back to the video I did last year where I made a, a batch of pineapple zucchini and a batch of black cherry zucchini. It is a fun way to put zucchini up that's just different and it's sweet. It tastes really good straight out of the jar. Some people use it to make to add to breads, like if they're making a sweet bread and they want like a pineapple coconut bread or something, they'll use it in that and various other things. And uh, so there's all kinds of options you can do with it. And, but it does require buying pineapple juice. Well, I bought a lot last year, so I have a lot to work through. So I'm going to keep doing this until I use up all that pineapple juice. And then the other thing, oh, and speaking of zucchini, so I've been dehydrating a lot. Once I get this jar filled up, I'm going to be done dehydrating zucchini for the year, and then I'm going to can some more. But I also, that zucchini back there, this little stubby one, I really want to get at least one more that I can allow to fully mature because I want to save the seeds. So this one, I believe, has been cross-pollinated. I grew it last year. Uh, it was it was a, the seed from a striped zucchini I had grown. But I think it got cross-pollinated with maybe the Black Beauty zucchini and possibly even my spaghetti squash. I don't know because it actually has been sending out tendrils trying to trying to grab onto something when it should be a bush zucchini not a climber and the just the shape of it is different and even on the inside it has a slightly more yellowish orangey tinge than standard zucchini does but the flavor is awesome so I really would like to grow this one again next year I still have seeds from that I saved from last year's zucchini left but I would like to get some from this one in particular. And then the other thing is every year I get, I'm sure we all do, every year I get some wonky zucchini. Either it's really massive in size, like the one I got last year, I can't remember how much it weighed. It was huge, was it 11 pounds maybe? It was massive. One of those ones that was growing out there and got hidden under the leaves and I didn't see it. But then I get these really wonky ones. So last year I got the, the one that was complete circle and I even put it on my hand like a bracelet. And I'll show you a picture here. And then this year, I got one that's flat. How weird is that? It's not flat so much on the bottom, but this was the top of it. This is how it grew. And I'm like, how <laughs> bizarre, the zucchini. So I don't know what caused it to do that because there was nothing pressing down on it. It just, no stems from the plant or anything. So I don't know, it was very weird. And then this one here is your standard Black Beauty uh, zucchini and this is the standard size it'll get obviously it will get much bigger like the one i showed in that picture that was like 11 pounds but you know you can pick them younger but they do get much bigger this to me is a good size to pick the black beauties up and then the tomatoes still got tomatoes ripening up and i brought this one over because i i bring once they start to blush that's when i bring them in and let them finish turning color in the window finish ripening in the window so that more energy can go into making more tomatoes and so i like to get these off there as soon as possible and usually in a day or two they turn this color so all the ones i've been getting so far are the purples and this is a purple and they do they can get quite big these are my favorite ones i don't know if they're the purple cherokee because there were seeds i saved years ago and i just keep growing them every year and saving the seeds again from a purple tomato i got from a store an organic purple tomato that I don't remember if it specified it was a purple Cherokee because it was in a bunch of tomatoes that were in there. There was there was a orange and red and I think yellow and then the purple. And anyway, um, I love these ones. They, they're some of the ones that do the best for me. And I have got a couple of the black Vernissage tomatoes in so far. I'll show you a picture here what they look like, but it's not from this year because I, I, for whatever reason, I didn't take a picture. But everything's, as I keep saying every video that I talk about the garden, all my annuals are six weeks behind, or at least most of them are six weeks behind, but at least we're kind of catching up. 
and I got a lot of green tomatoes out there and I will bring them in and ripen. Yes, no, there's a lot of things you can do with green tomatoes. I've even done videos on the relish and, and uh, you can use them in salsa. You can make fried green tomatoes. I've used them in sautés. Uh, I've used them in bakes. You can do a lot with green tomatoes. I just prefer them red. I, I prefer them when they're fully ripe. And so um, I like to get them, ripen them up. And as I said in last week's video, I now have switched to fully dehydrating all of my tomatoes because they take up less room because of the way that I use them in the first place. It's kind of pointless for me to can them and have them take up that much more room. I probably reduce the space they take up by about 75% I would say at least and I do have an old video I did on making the tomato flakes I'll link to down below it's a few years old but virtually I still I do it pretty much the same way except for now I use the silicone trays now that they finally started coming out with some with the edges on it and threw out all the plastic ones that warp and then and they're plastic and I like the silicone so much better then another thing is sheep sorrel. I've thought all this time was a weed coming up in my front garden areas and I keep pulling it up and keep pulling it up. And it wasn't until a friend told me about sheep sorrel and how it's used in cancer, in teas that help to treat cancer. And so I looked it up and I saw it was a picture of that stuff I keep pulling up. <laughs> I did, had no idea it was a sorrel. Sorrel comes in various different forms. You have one that looks like a giant clover. That's I think called wood sorrel and we tend to get that at our other property and then so i tasted the leaf it looks very different than the other sorrels and sure enough it's definitely a sorrel it has the same exact flavor so since it's just growing wild out there i've been pulling up the whole plants because it just keeps coming back up and dehydrating it and um, i'm hoping to get this jar filled up and maybe eventually i'll do a video on that i i'll I don't have a lot of information. I haven't researched all the many health benefits, but I do know that and did find that about the help helping to prevent and treat cancer. So I thought it'd be a good idea to have a jar of that on hand. Okay, and now let me go back to last week's video where I, I was talking about canning beans and I gave you these times. I only just, uh, under that video, I had several people correcting me on the canning times. And I think I know what happened. I've been canning my beans for that, my green beans for that long for years because I thought that was the time. And I think what I did, because I, I always use my All American book instead of my ball book, which I do have, but the American, the All American one's always handier for me to grab. And I'm thinking what I must have done was seen the canning times for beans like dried beans, you know, pinto beans, black beans, whatever, and thought that was green beans. And ever since, I've been canning my green beans from the garden for way too long. So I think if I remember correctly, people were saying 20 minutes for pints and 30 minutes for quarts. And I'll try, I'll find it and try to put it in text here. So that's a correction. Thank you to those who let me know that because I've been wasting propane for years. I had no idea. I should have went and double checked it in another book. And, but I'm glad to know that from here on out because it's gonna make the process go so much faster. I'm gonna save propane because I do all my canning outside on a propane burner. Thankfully though, my beans have always turned out great. They've never turned out mushy. So anyway, uh, I wanted to say that real quick, make that correction. And again, thank you for those who let me know that. And then the lids, I didn't bring the lids up in here, but well, you can see right here, this, all the, bean, all the things I've been canning, the green beans, the pineapple zucchini, the regular zucchini. Uh, I've been using a mix of the superb brand lids and the four jars lids. Since both companies uh, unsolicited each sent me a, a bunch of these lids to try out, I decided with each batch I would do half and half. Now this is the first batch I did with just the regular mouth. All the other jars that I did, the, the green beans, the zucchini, I have done with the wide mouth. And I've had no problems with either of the brands. Now, some people were saying that, I guess Wanda did a video on the superb ones and she said that her the wide mouth ones, the lids were buckling and causing her jars to break. That didn't happen with me, at least not so far. And then somebody else come, said that they were having problems getting their all of their four jars lids to seal. And so far, 
none of those have been an issue either. So I do know when I was reading reviews on Amazon on the superb brand lids that there were a couple of people in there that reviewed it that ended up getting, and I think this is one of their very, some of their very first batches that came out of the lids. They ended up with some that had defects. They said they were visible defects in the lids and then the lids would not seal at all. So what my assumption is, is they've gone, it was probably just a, a defect in the actual, you know, when they're pressing out the lids, whatever machinery they were using. And when they discovered it, they probably went back and fixed it because I've not seen that on any of the lids that I re I've received. So, and yes, they're the Lehman's lids. They're called Superb as is says right here and that's what I've been calling them but they are Lehman's so you can get them from Lehman's you can also get them from Amazon which I'll link to down below I don't know if there's other places you can buy them from and then four jars you can get directly from their website I don't have an affiliate link now the four jars lids the superb the reason I like the superb better which is what I was saying is they're a nice thick lid with a thicker gummy section around them than the four jars and that they're made entirely in the U.S. where the Four Jars brand is made overseas. It's, they're made in China. I emailed the company and asked them specifically where they're made. They told me China. But somebody, a couple people I think it was, told me in comments, which I haven't been able to find yet, but I haven't looked real hard, that apparently Four Jars is trying to get their factory moved to the U.S. So if they do that, then definitely I would recommend their lids. Uh, but for now, I'm going to, if I have to buy any more lids, I'm going to go with the U.S. made ones until these ones are actually made in the U.S. as well. But, uh, and it's not that, I mean, sometimes we just have to resort to buying things made in China because there's so few things made in the U.S. But as much as possible, I do try to support U.S. based businesses, just like the wallet I have, those toys that I bought and I talked about last week. And they have a lot more different toys I found. They're not just the water ones. They have other ones and they're great. And uh, anyway, and I'll put a link to, to that store again down below because they're all made in the U.S. and they're just wonderful toys. Jackson loves them. And he still likes the helicopter best. I thought he would like the, the plane best, but nope, he still likes the helicopter best. He does like the plane. He likes the plane a lot. He just likes the helicopter better. <laughs> I still had some more stuff to talk about, but this video is already too long as I can see by my time there. So hopefully I can cut it down a lot shorter than that. So I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. If you have any comments, suggestions, ideas, thoughts on anything I shared, go ahead and put those in comments down below. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.